Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. U.S. Marine develops low-cost 3D printed UAS. John Hopkins APL's Dragonfly dual quadcopter aims to explore Titan. And Chicago drone pilot wins case against the city. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. Rhett McNeil, a 26-year-old Marine Corporal from Griffin, Georgia, has developed a 3D-printed UAS nicknamed Scout that is a cheaper alternative to the hand-launched fixed-wing RQ-11 Raven and RQ-12 Wasp-3 UAS that the Marines currently use. Costing $35,000 and $49,000 per unit respectively, the Raven and Wasp UAS are considered relatively inexpensive by military standards, but they are still expensive enough to where only a few Marines are authorized to use them. The UAS also require $100,000 plus in ground control systems, adding to their overall value. McNeil Scout UAS is far cheaper than the Raven and Wasp UAS as the Scout, which can be controlled using the iPhone app Q Ground Control, can be built for just $613 with off-the-shelf electronics and 3D printer resin. A Scout UAS system, which includes two UAS and one control system, costs less than 0.5% of a $250,000 Wasp system. Quote, we have these drones that do a hundred things that make them cost between $35,000 and $50,000, but the soldiers normally use the two or three big capabilities, McNeil explains. I wanted to strip it down to what we actually use so that our drone does not cost so much we are afraid to use it. If you break it, not a big deal. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. AVSI and the National Council on Public Safety UAS have entered a partnership to encourage and promote the use of UAS by public safety agencies. AUVSI and NCPSU will collaborate to create education and informational programs and materials to facilitate the widespread adoption of UAS among first responders. On August 6, the MQ-1C Gray Eagle Extended Range UAS completed a 41.9-hour endurance flight, which surpassed the 40-hour flight test goal. The UAS flew out of El Mirage, California. David R. Alexander, President, Aircraft Systems for GA ASI, noted, quote, The MQ-1C ER represents a significant enhancement in capability over the currently fielded MQ-1C and will be a game changer on the battlefield in support of our Army customer. Aurora Flight Sciences hosted a visit from U.S. Army Research Laboratory Aerospace Engineers August 15th. Earlier this summer, Aurora officials visited the Army's research facilities at Aberdeen Proving Ground, Maryland. The Army hopes to achieve high speed, high endurance, and high payload capabilities for vertical lift platforms. To achieve those goals, the researchers said they are interested in building a collaborative relationship with Aurora. The Nevada Governor's Office of Economic Development and the Nevada Institute for Autonomous Systems has teamed up with Microsoft's UAS research team to test artificial intelligence in their 16.5-foot, 12.5-pound sailplane. The sailplane that Microsoft is testing in Nevada relies on a battery to run onboard computational equipment and controls. Once it's up in the air, the UAS demonstrated its ability to operate on its own, finding and using thermals to stay aloft. U.S. government policy restricting the export of military drones is giving China a leg up in the market, according to the CEO of General Atomics. Speaking August 16th, General Atomics CEO Lyndon Blue said that U.S. government restrictions by American companies on the sale of drones to allies and partner nations also precludes them from providing sustainment and logistic services, which can mean more business for U.S. companies and American jobs. That was our Unmanned Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Quadcopters in space, Dragonfly, a new Frontiers class mission concept that the John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory has proposed to NASA, would use an instrumented radioisotope-powered dual quadcopter to explore Saturn's largest moon, Titan. The moon is one of a number of ocean worlds in our solar system that hold the ingredients for life. Quote, 
This is the kind of experiment we can't do in the laboratory because of the time scales involved, said APL's Elizabeth Turtle, Principal Investigator for Dragonfly. Dragonfly would make numerous flights moving from one geologic setting to another, Titan's dense atmospheric and low gravity make flight easier than on Earth. Dragonfly would be powered by a multi-mission radioisotope thermoelectric generator as there is insufficient light to use solar power efficiently. At each site, Dragonfly would sample the surface and atmosphere with a suite of carefully selected science instruments that will characterize the habitability of Titan's environment. Although the idea of exploring Titan by rotorcraft is not new, technological developments in the last two decades, sometimes referred to as the drone revolution, have made such a mission more feasible. Later this fall, NASA is expected to select a few of the new Frontier mission proposals for further study. Final mission selection is expected in mid-2019. A drone operator with a Part 107 license was recently cited in the city of Chicago for flying his aircraft over people without consent, except that it didn't happen. Attorney Jeffrey Antonelli represented Jarek Hackham, who made one flight on Chicago's lakefront. Stopped by the police, he pointed to the section of Chicago's drone law, showing it does not apply to those flying with FAA licensing. However, the police reportedly assumed that because of the people on the waterfront, he must have violated an ordinance by flying over them without permission. But again, that didn't happen. No witnesses claimed that, and police observation of pedestrians on the lakefront were made after the flight. Despite cooperating with the police, his possession of a license, and no witnesses against him, he was ticketed. Antonelli's firm represented Mr. Hackham and won. They believe it is the first time that the city has prosecuted an FAA licensed commercial drone pilot. Antonelli writes that the citation should not have been issued in the first place and that the case demonstrated a failure of national drone policy. He also opines that the Chicago ordinance is largely, if not entirely, preempted by federal law. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.